group, the, the, all six of the first group um, come up. And um, chance for questions for any of the presenters thus far about any of the, the businesses you've heard, how they work, business side, product side, marketing side, whatever interests you. Yeah, please. No, I'm talking about Yes, yeah, so the, the question is um, um, for the um, uh, Latino news. Uh, you tell about the uh, WhatsApp Messenger as a uh, um, distribution content. Uh, you mentioned the, the cards. Uh, how do you see um, and, and how it works? Uh, do, you, do you have to develop a, a special uh, software? It's just ha having uh, your a, a number and you subscribe uh, to, to several yeah. numbers? Is it working? Yeah. There are several media organizations that are actually experimenting with WhatsApp uh, and many of us, for example, Tinashe in Zimbabwe also mentioned that uh, increasingly more people are getting their news uh, through WhatsApp. Uh, for example, the BBC did uh, their uh, coverage about the Indian election on WhatsApp and people could subscribe to a number and they would send their results uh, through that messaging app. So that's what, that's one of my ideas, like having verticals with uh, themes or topics that people can subscribe to, and also just uh, spread the content over social networks. I'm more interested in the users actually sharing the things li li as, as they want to. So I would be spreading all those tidbits and um, the style uh, tidbits of information on Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, and then let the users send them with their contents, with their family, with their friends, or with whoever they like. So it would be like the two things. Any other questions for anyone in the group? Hi, this question is for Roxanne. Um, will you be incorporating any sort of like a user interaction, um, you know, like TripAdvisor or Yelp, uh, you know, has reviews of trips and hotels. Like how will you enable your community to communicate with one another once they hear the podcasts? Um, well, I'm going to build a home site. The, the minimum viable product is the actual podcast. And then once I see how much traction it has, I, I, I would love to build a community so that they're interacting with each other and not just the podcast. Um, I, I, the, the research that I've done, the people do kind of like to interact with that, but I don't have, I don't have an idea going forward like how that's going to look yet. I really want to see how people are going to react to the podcast first, but it's something that I'm thinking about. Anyone else before the next group? Oh, by the way, go ahead, yes. Hi, this question is also for Maria. Um, I was just wondering what uh, topics and themes have your users been most interested in so far? Um, environment, um, education, and also doing the service and talking to people. They are very interested in visualizing the talent within the Latino community. They are a little bit tired of uh, tra how traditional media portray them um, from I have, I have talked about uh, that only 1% of the stories talk about Latinos, even if they are 20% of the population right now. My project is focused on young people, but if you should take a look to the overall picture, there has been a huge and dramatic uh, change on the demographics. And that 1%, pretty much all the stories are about crime or immigration. And that's not an accurate portrait of the reality. So. They're interested in recipes of food, for example, or music. Thank you. Um, the, the blog is going to be in Spanish, English. Uh, what is your opinion about the new companies or any company which need to translate all their website and social media into Spanish to reach the Hispanic market? I think that question remains unsolved. Uh, it's, for example, the New York Times has launched the New York Times America, and they translate the content to uh, Spanish. Um, there are many outlets uh, in Spanish, but there are others. For example, BuzzFeed 
is doing uh, is, is being very ambitious, targeting the Latino community, and they are doing the same things that they, they have done with their, the rest of the content that they, they provide, but uh, targeted to Latino market. My opinion is that uh, the consumption is shifting for, uh, to English, but I also think that Latinos don't read so much in Spanish, young Latinos, because there's not a good uh, offer of content. One more question, and... Uh... Hi, I was wondering in Zimbabwe, um, you mentioned a lot of the phones are really old, and uh, I, I'm assuming not a lot of people have internet access. How are people going to actually receive the content you're, you're producing? Uh, thank you. Um, things are changing, so I think the smartphone market is growing. Um, people don't necessarily need an iPhone or a Samsung Galaxy 3. Um, people are going to China and Dubai and bringing some kind of smartphones. And th those ones are popular on the streets, in the shops. And secondly, the five months that I've spent in New York, uh, it's just been exploring other technical solutions, technical alternatives. So I've been beta testing, talking to people, uh, building uh, mobile platforms that, for example, share SMS and voice together without necessarily uh, the need for internet. So I'm, I'm very much aware of like, uh, those uh, challenges and limitations. Thank you. So while we're getting the next group up, um, up to the front, I'm just gonna play a short clip from um, a um, <coughs> podcast we have. And this is actually a podcast by Kristen Clark, one of our fellows. And um, you heard Sneha talking about her current project, but before she had this project, she had a different project called Peruse. Um, and, um, and you'll hear a little bit about the challenges of uh, pivoting. It's just a one minute audio clip. You want it or need it. But that doesn't mean that this is going to be easy. Another mistake, I think, which led to taking such a long time to actually shift my focus was I had felt like I was peruse in a way, which made it very difficult to detach, recognize that there was a problem, and pivot accordingly. I mean, I, I guess it's kind of like um, if you ever watch or read the Iron Man comics when Tony Stark feels like he is Iron Man, but at some point he realizes that he's a person outside of Iron Man, which allows him to get surgery to remove the shrapnel in his chest. So in, I guess I had a similar experience where I realized that I am not my company and I am a person who has a lot of interests and I guess could do a lot of things outside of that. And when I realized that, it just became much easier to shift away from it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so, um, if you're interested in hearing more about the program and what it was like, um, if you go to bit.ly slash EJ listen, you can hear all the episodes taking you through this journey that these fellows that you're hearing tonight have been on over these past few months. So next up, we have Rebecca Harris. Awesome. <clears throat> all right. This one? Good? All right. Hey, everyone. Thank you so much for coming out tonight. My name is Rebecca Harris, and I'm the co-founder of Purple Politics, which is a political engagement platform dedicated to reconnecting millennials with politics and providing new ways for our generation to make a political impact in the digital space. So if I could just get a quick show of hands, how many of you guys have ever read a headline like this and thought to yourself, what the hell even is the debt ceiling? Yeah, all right. All right, and how many of you guys have ever been out getting drinks with friends and everyone's talking about Obamacare and you're kind of nodding along, like you totally understand everything they're saying, but really inside your head you're like, oh, I really wish I was more informed on this topic so I could actually contribute more to this conversation. Yeah, so, so we've all been there. <laughs> where you want to be better informed on an issue, but you don't know a great news source to go to that just explains it in a really clear, unbiased way that allows that light bulb to go off or you have that moment of, oh, I finally understand this issue. Well, Purple Politics is that source. Most news organizations report on an issue without actually explaining it. So we fill that void by creating beautiful, visual, 
in-depth, accessible explainers that break down complicated issues for a millennial audience in an unbiased way. So we launched our website in February with a daily email newsletter where we do a mini explainer on a different issue each day and our first in-depth explainer on healthcare reform. Um, and the healthcare reform piece is a multimedia piece with a mixture of text, <laughs> video, and infographics. And I just want to play a quick clip of the end of one of our videos um, that is explaining how deductibles work. Oh, it's not playing. All right. Huh? Okay. All right. Well, that's all right. That's okay. If you're a young, healthy person, you're probably not going to need a lot of health care during the year. So you would probably want a plan with a higher deductible. That would mean you pay less per month and you only have to pay out of pocket if you get sick or injured, which is pretty unlikely. But... If you do get sick and your medical bill runs over your deductible, you know that your ass is covered. So uh, when we launched this project, we started taking in a lot of user feedback and people overwhelmingly loved these videos. And so we're actually pivoting a bit in our editorial strategy. And we're going to be focusing now on, cre on producing really highly shareable content optimized for different social media platforms with a really heavy emphasis on video. In terms of revenue, we have three main revenue streams we're focusing on. The first, a little bit more traditional, being um, creating high-quality sponsored content and syndication of our own content. Um, the second being live events. And the third, focusing more on consulting. So we're going to be gaining an incredible amount of insight into the political views, wants, and needs of millennials. So we can then offer an array of products and services to brands, organizations, and even political leaders to help them better understand and engage with that age demographic. This is our roadmap for the next 19 months. Um, as I said, we're going to be cre uh, focusing on creating really highly shareable content optimized for social media. Um, we are launching in September our 2016 election hub, which will have everything you need to know for this upcoming election. We'll have in-depth explainers on all the candidates, on all the major issues, as well as an interactive data portal that will source and make visual in real time all of the data that's relevant to this election. Um, this is our team. Uh, it's myself, my co-founder, Jen Sclafani, who is a graphic designer, along with our two developers, David and Alex. Um, and uh, in just five years, millennials will represent 40% of all eligible voters in America. So our generation really truly has an incredible amount of power to influence future politics and policy. But you can't solve the problems that you want to solve until you understand what the problems are. This is why we're focusing first on content and creating a really informed future electorate. But our vision really goes beyond just creating content. because We just view content as a fundamental building block that will lead to better um, political engagement and action for our generation. We truly believe that in the very near future, participation in the democratic process will move into the digital space. And so we're positioning ourselves to be on the forefront of that transition. So thank you guys so much. Um, if you want to go check out purplepolitics.com, we would love for you to subscribe to our newsletter and welcome any feedback. And I'm looking forward to any questions you guys have. Thank you. Great job. Uh, one quick question. So you talked about sponsored content as a revenue stream. Right. However, you're also claiming to be an unbiased platform. How do you juxtapose these ideas uh, I understand you can you know, say, okay, this is sponsored, but it seems a little bit uh, hazy to me. So uh, maybe sponsored content wasn't the right word, but when, we, when I say sponsored content, we don't mean um, sponsored and hosted on our platform. We more mean using ourselves as a creative agency almost to produce content for other organizations that's either co-branded as pr you know, for X company produced by Purple Politics or just licensing and syndication of our own content um, for them. So yeah. That's a great question. Awesome. Thanks.